and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new stencil, Heart Garden Stencil. We're also going to be introducing our Heart Wreath Stencils and our Stitched Happy Heart, which is so cute. And we're also going to be introducing our Foiled Sentiments Happy Valentine's Day Hot Foil Plate. Now the other really cool thing is that Stitched Happy Heart is adorable and it also works as the coordinating die for this foiled sentiment, which I love that so much. And we're gonna show you how this all works together. So let's go ahead and check it out. We're gonna start off with the heart wreath stencils. And you'll see that this is a two-step stencil and etched in the upper right-hand corner, we have a number one and a number two to help you remember the order in which to do these. We're gonna start off with the number one stencil, which is kind of like the leafy part of this heart. And the cute thing about this is you could do this all in green, you could do it all in pink, you could get really creative with it, but we're gonna go along with the kind of gardeny theme of the stencil, and we're gonna do all of the greenery here in green, and you'll see we're just adding the ink right over top of the stencil, just like that. And then once you have beautiful color all built up, you can remove the stencil and now you'll see this beautiful wreath that's forming. Now here, if you wanted it to have more of a greenery look, you could do all of these heart-shaped flowers in maybe like a lighter shade of green, or you can do them in a pink or a purple, yellow, etc. And in this case, we're gonna do a pink just to feel kind of perfect for Valentine's Day. So we've lined up that stencil and on that stencil, there are these awesome little marks, these little etched marks that help you line up the hearts exactly with that wreath. It makes it super, super easy to do. And now we're just building up all of this ink over top. And you'll see as we lift up the stencil, isn't it gorgeous? Oh my gosh, it's the most beautiful wreath. And we're gonna be showing you two really cool ways to use the wreath in this video. But before we do that, we're gonna take a look at the Heart Garden Stencil. Now the Heart Garden Stencil has one stencil with a bunch of different parts in it. So this little bottom is this cute little hill that you can add on to your card. And I like that you can use the Heart Garden with or without the hill. But in this case, we're gonna build up some nice green ink onto that hill. And then we can go ahead and lift the stencil and you'll see how beautiful this hill looks. Then we're gonna shift the stencil down and I'm gonna line up the very ends of those stems, right just overlapping a little bit onto the hill. And in this case, I'm gonna use one of these little finger dauber brushes so that I can just carefully ink the stems and not the ones on the outside. We're just gonna start with the three in the middle first. So here you can see, we can kind of keep building up that color. And I like when the color is a little uneven, darker areas, some lighter areas than the other. It makes it just look really special. And here you can see my son Miles' hands. He's three and he was so excited to help out in this video. So he's gonna remove the magnets and then do the big reveal and lift that up and look how beautiful that is. Now the stencil has some etched lines that are gonna help you line up those heart-shaped flowers. So you can just line up those etched lines with those leaves that you already stenciled. Hold it in place with some magnets and Miles, take it away. <gasps> Let's do some flowers. Let's do some and then flowers. once we have it all lined okay. up, we're gonna use some pink ink again and we're just gonna fill in those cute little heart-shaped flowers. We're doing the pink and green again because I just think it's so cute for Valentine's Day, but really you could use any colors or a whole rainbow of colors and Shari's got a really cute way of using these flowers later on in the video. And so here you can see, Miles is gonna build up the color on these flowers. And if you have little ones at home, stencils are so much fun to do with them. He has such a blast doing them. So we're gonna tap off the excess and then we're gonna add that pink ink right onto those flowers and then do the big reveal. And is this not the cutest little scene to add a little critter into? Oh my goodness, I just love it. Now, of course, you could just do these three flowers, but we actually have two little extra stems on the outside there. So if you shift that up, they'll line up perfectly with that hill. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill in the green on those. And now you can see how you could add even more flowers into your garden. Then all you need to do is shift that stencil down. You're gonna use those etched guidelines there that are on the stencil to line it up with the greenery that you've already gone ahead and added to your card. And then you can hold it in place again with tape or magnets, depending on how you like to stencil. And then we're gonna take our pink ink again and just fill in these cute little heart-shaped flowers. And I just think this is just the sweetest stencil. It is one of my favorites now. It's just so adorable. And now we can lift up that stencil and look at this little heart garden. Isn't that just so sweet? sweet. 
Now, another thing that I wanted to show you is that it's so fun to create a garden with three flowers or five flowers, but you could also just use one of these flowers on its own. You can use it with that little hill or without. That's what I love about this stencil is you can just kind of selectively ink parts of it to get the look that you want for your card. And I think this would be really, really sweet to just stencil one of the leaves and then one of these little hearts. And you could just put a critter next to it and a sentiment and it would just be a cute, simple little card or tag. Oh, I just love that idea. So now I've gone ahead and lined it up the same way. I've lined it up with the etching lines, but I'm only filling in the one heart. And now you can see how sweet it is to stencil even just one of these little heart flowers. And I just love that there are so many ways to use this stencil and so many cute scenes that you could create. Next, we're gonna take a look at the stitched happy heart. And this happy heart gives you a cute little stitch tart and a stitch opening. It has a little bow, some heart-shaped sequins that are just adorable, little rosy cheeks, eyes and a mouth, and hands. And this gives you a lot of really fun and cute ways to use this heart. So you could use it just as a heart, which is awesome. Or you could line up this cute little smiley face, run it through the die cut machine, and look how cute and sweet that is. Oh, I just love it so much. So we're going to take some black cardstock and we're just going to layer that behind to give some color to the eyes and the mouth. So we'll just add some adhesive and any little scrap behind will do because no one will see that area behind the heart. And then you can see that you can add cute little rosy cheeks as well. And those little sequins, oh my goodness, we die cut those out of some of the gold metallic cardstock and they look like real sequins but in a heart shape. I just think they're so cute and I can't wait to make shaker cards with them. Here you can see the heart's really cute like that, or you can add this little decoration that kind of reminds me of when you get um, a heart-shaped box of chocolates where it's got the little bow around the end. I just think that's so cute. And then there's these little arms that you can add onto the heart, and this just makes me smile so much. And there's those little sequins there. You can see that you could create like a little shaker card as well, which would be really sweet with that heart-shaped opening. So we're going to add some adhesive to the arm ends and then we're going to layer that behind the heart. And so you can have the arms be out like this on a card and we're going to do that in just a little bit in this video. Or you can also fold the arms around. So you'll see that once they're glued to the back, you can just kind of bend them right around and then the heart can hold something. And I think that's really, really cute. I think this is really sweet with like a big hug sentiment. But you can see how the arms can kind of come around like that. And then here we just took an image from our stamp set Scent With Love add-on. Um, anything would work. A cute little bouquet of flowers would be really sweet. And so we're just going to have what looks like a box of chocolates hold a box of chocolates because I just think that's funny. And so he's just going to hold it like that. And look how sweet for a Valentine's Day card. It's just adorable. Now, I love Stitch Happy Heart so much on its own, but it's really cool because it also functions as the coordinating die for this hot foil plate. So this is our foiled sentiments, Happy Valentine's Day. We're gonna add that onto our glimmer machine. We're gonna press the timer button. It's gonna flash for about a minute. I just fast forwarded time there. Once it's solid, we're gonna take a piece of foil and we're gonna put it face down. Then we're gonna take the cardstock that we wanna add the foil to and put that down. And then the glimmer machine comes with two plates. We're gonna put that over top. Then we're going to take the whole thing, we're going to pop it off the machine, and off camera we're going to run it through the die cut machine. That's going to press the foil into the paper and you'll see this absolutely gorgeous design. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it in that sparkly gold foil too. And if you've never done hot foil before, make sure to check out our intro to hot foil video. We'll link it in the description below. So you can foil directly on your card design, or like we talked about earlier, you can use the stitched happy heart to die cut this sentiment. So we're just gonna line up that heart like that. We'll hold it in place with some low tack tape. We can run it through the die cut machine. And now we're gonna have a beautifully die cut foiled image that is just gorgeous for any Valentine's Day card. Look how pretty that is with the stitching detail around it. I just think that's so gorgeous. So now that we've taken a look at all of the products that we're featuring in this video, we're gonna start creating cards with them. And we're gonna be starting off here with our heart garden stencil. I just love the stencil. So I'm gonna die cut the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles. We're gonna die cut that from some white cardstock. I'm gonna add this on to my little stencil station here, but you can do your stenciling however your favorite way to do it is. And I'm gonna take this little heart garden there and I'm gonna line up the hill and work on that first. And in this case, I'm actually gonna use some post-it notes to just protect the edges. You could also just use smaller brushes as well, but it's just kind of up to you. Here I'm using post-it notes and I'm just taking a piece of scrap paper that I had and just covering up the rest of the stencil. 
And then I'm gonna bring in some different distressings and we are recreating a card by Audrey. So thank you so much, Audrey. I just fell in love with this card so much when I saw it, it's so gorgeous. And we are starting off with some Twisted Citron. We're also going to use some freshly cut grass and rustic wilderness to build up the ink onto this little hill. And we're gonna keep it darker towards the top and then lighter towards the bottom. And by building up all of these beautiful greens, it's just gonna give it a really nice dynamic look. So now we're gonna bring in our darker green and just really build up that color. Then once I brought in all the greens, I went back to my lightest green and I just went over top there just a little bit just to help kind of blend everything in and bring some brightness back into this hill. Then we're gonna take the darkest color, which was Rustic Wilderness, but any dark green would do, and we're gonna smear it there on the edge. I'm gonna just spray a little bit of water and mix that together with a little paintbrush, and then we're gonna tap the edge of the paintbrush and create little splatters all over this hill. And by leaving the stencil there, it's gonna make sure that we only get splatters onto the hill, and it's gonna give it a really, really nice texture. And here, I always love the big reveal of lifting up the stencil, and look how beautiful that looks. So now what we're gonna do is take the stencil and we're gonna shift it on down so that the grouping of the three little leaves there are gonna line up with the top of the stencil. And you'll see that just a little bit of the stem is kind of overlapping onto the hill that I already stenciled down. And then I'm just gonna take my post-its and put them all around to protect the areas that I don't wanna add ink to just yet. And then we're gonna repeat the same colors that we did for the hill on the stem. So I'm starting with my lightest green and I'm making sure to keep it nice and light. And when I add on the darker greens, I'm just going kind of to the outsides of the petals. And that way it's gonna give it a really pretty dynamic look and kind of keep the three shades going in there. So you see, I'm just adding a little bit of the darker color right along the outside edge. And here we will have our reveal. We'll lift up the stencil and we'll see those beautiful stems there that are waiting for some heart-shaped flowers. And what's really great about these heart-shaped flowers, again, is they have that etching on the stencil. It's a little hard to see on camera, but it's really easy to see in person. And you line up those etched lines with the stems that you've already stenciled on there. I'm just gonna add some post-its just around just to protect my edges. And then for these cute little heart-shaped flowers, I'm gonna be using some picked raspberry ink. And what I'm gonna do is start really really light onto these little flowers. And then I'm gonna build up the color on just one side to give them the look of being kind of a little bit like we colored them with markers and kind of shaded the edge. So there you see, I've got it uh, kind of nice and light in the middle and then a little bit darker towards the edge. And I'll repeat the same thing, nice and light and then a little bit darker towards the edge. And you'll see just how pretty and bright these are turning out. And now my favorite is the big, big reveal here. You can see how beautiful this is. Isn't that just stunning? And I love that you can get so much of a dynamic range just with your ink. So I'm bringing back my post-its here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up my flowers and I'm gonna be doing some splattering with some black watercolor paint. And this was something that Audrey did on her card that I thought was so pretty, but I got a little nervous. I'm like, let me just put post-its everywhere just to be safe. So I, I added a little bit of water to that black watercolor paint and I just picked up a little bit with my paintbrush and I'm just tapping and having some splatters just a little bit around the top and the bottom. And I think this just looks so pretty, especially with those bright pink flowers you'll see when we lift everything up it just gives it a really nice dynamic look especially with the cool little rainbow touch we're going to add in a bit and oh my goodness, this is looking so cute already. And next up, it's time to add a sentiment. So I'm gonna be using my Misty stamping tool because I did so much inking on this, I didn't wanna make a mistake. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a sentiment from the Porcupine For You add-on. And it says, thanks for loving me, which I think is such a sweet sentiment. And so I'm gonna line that up and then pick it up with the door of my Misty. And we're gonna stamp that in some black licorice ink to go along with our black paint splatters that we have on the background. I'm gonna put this aside for now and I'm gonna take out a piece of cardstock that was trimmed down to be five and a half by four and a quarter and I'm gonna take this vertical rainbow stripes washi. And I love how Autry does this. She likes to have a little pop of either pattern paper or washi tape on the sides and this is such a fun way to do it. So I'm gonna take my scissors so that it's a nice clean edge and I'm just gonna pull out some washi there and then I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim it down. And I'm gonna put it down about half an inch or so from the top and it'll have about an inch or so at the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want it to be a really pretty peak of rainbow washi. And then I'm gonna fold it over the edge so that it has like a nice finished look. 
then what we're going to do is we're going to take the piece that we stenciled earlier. We're going to add some foam squares to the back just to give it a nice pop. And then we're going to layer it over that piece of cardstock with the washi. And there is something about the pop of the rainbow with the back splatters with the bright pink flowers that I think is just so gorgeous. Now this design is ready for your favorite critter and I think the porcupines from this release would be so much fun but I really liked that Audrey went and shopped her stash and found one of my favorite sets which is a bug deal and got this cute little caterpillar. I mean look at him. He is just adorable. So we're going to layer him down at the bottom of the flowers and then this little butterfly is from Toucan Do It and so we're going to add the butterfly and the trail and just trim off the excess of the trail and there's something about that tiny little caterpillar with the big heart shaped flowers that just just makes me smile. I think this is just so sweet. And so here we have a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll just add some tape runner to that and then we can layer this whole panel on top. And I love that the stenciling is really the star of the show and I can't wait to make more cards like this but add all of my different favorite critters to them. And then for a little finishing touch, I decided to take my white gel pen and just add a little bit of detail, just like Audrey did. And I think this looks really, really cute. So we're just going to add a little bit to the stenciling. And you can see it really makes that stenciling pop. And now the card is all done. It is so super cute. And thank you so much, Audrey, for this gorgeous design. And next up, Shari is going to make the most beautiful heart wreath stencil card. So take it away, Shari. So for my card today, I'm starting out with a stitch rectangle. This is four and a quarter by five and a half, and I've cut it out of some speckled eggshell cardstock. I'll be using my grip mat to hold my cardstock and my stencils in place, and I'm starting out with the first stencil of the heart wreath stencil set. This is the stencil that will be the greenery. I'm using two shades of green, so I have a celery stick for my lighter shade and freshly cut grass for my darker shade and I will first go all over with that celery stick ink filling in all those greenery pieces. Next I'll pull in that darker shade of green which is the freshly cut grass and I will be using a small blending brush for this so that I can just get some smaller spaces of this darker green. I'm kind of going where the stems start so at the bases of the stems just to give a little bit of variation in that color. These colors will lighten up a little bit as they dry and absorb into the paper and you'll get a really nice blend between the two green colors. Next, I'll pull in the second stencil in the heart wreath stencil set. This one will color in all the little heart-shaped flowers and the little detail dots around them. For this, I will be using some peachy keen and some guava ink. So again, two colors just for a little bit of variation in the color of the stenciling. I'll start with that peachy keen, which is the lighter color. Go all over with that ink into all of those little spaces. And then I'll pull in the guava. Again, I'm going to use a little brush to do this so that I can get sort of the base of the little hearts and not have to color in the whole heart. So especially on these big hearts, I just want the base where it kind of connects to the greenery to be a little bit darker. Again, this gives some variation in the colors and it won't look quite so flat. So I'll pull this away and you'll see this beautiful heart wreath that we've created on this speckled eggshell panel. Now I did want to kind of darken this up a little bit and apricot is a perfect color to kind of go around the edges of this panel and give it a little definition on that stitch edging. I think it kind of looks a little antique when you do this and not quite so stark as one color. Gives it a little bit more interest. So I'm just working my way around, again using my grip mat to just hold that in place as I do so, but that's just because I already had it on this grip mat. You could also use any kind of slick surface to blend on. Next, I'm pulling out my metallic watercolors and I'm using this gold here. This is the blue gold and I'm just adding some gold flecks and splatters all over this panel. This will give it a really nice subtle shimmer in the background. Once I have all those little flecks of gold looking the way I want, I will pull this off of the grip mat carefully and set this aside so that that metallic paint can dry. 
Once it's dry, I will add this to a card base so I can take my adhesive and run it along all four sides. And then I like to run one or two down the center and just line this up with the top of the card and pop that right on there. So now I can start to look at my images and I've colored and cut out some images from the Porcupine For You stamp set. And I'm just going to arrange them and figure out what I want this to look like on my card. I do have this little tulip that I will go ahead and add to this little porcupine's hand. So I don't have to worry about that little piece anymore. And I decided I wanted to add a bow to my wreath. So I'm using this bow die. This is from the Merry Mistletoe die set. And I'm just cutting it from guava cardstock so it matches those hearts in my stenciling. This bow has three pieces, so I'll add that little knot to the middle of the loops there. And then you can see at the bottom I have the little tails. So I'll just add another little dot of glue and drop the top of the bow on there. This is going to go right here in the center of my wreath and I think it will finish it off quite nicely. So I'll just add this with some liquid glue and I'll use my tweezers so that I don't get any glue on my hands and I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Now I can add my little porcupines. I want to pop them up with some foam squares so that they have some dimension off of that stenciled background and that wreath looks like it is kind of behind them. And I'm sure to add one little piece to that flower as well so it's supported. And these two little guys will meet in the middle. One is handing the other a flower. I also have some other little elements to add and complete my scene. So I have these cute little mushrooms. I love this little trio of mushrooms. I've colored these in some lighter colors that match the colors I'm using on my card. I also have a bunch of the little butterfly from the stamp set and I thought these would be perfect to kind of place around and fill in because it's a little butterfly so it can fly around and it's perfect to kind of add some embellishments to this wreath. And then don't worry about that little snail there. He's going to come into play here in just a minute. For my sentiment, I thought it would be really cute to make a sentiment banner out of the wood grain pattern paper, the coffee table pattern paper. So I've cut a strip of that here and I am going to white emboss my sentiment on this strip of paper. The sentiment says, you're so poor cute pine, which I just think is adorable. So I've already prepped this with my anti-static powder tool. I'm stamping it in clear embossing ink and adding white embossing powder to it. Then I can heat this up with my heat tool till that embossing powder melts and I get that bright white sentiment on that wood grain pattern paper. I like to emboss the sentiment first and then use my sentiment banner die to cut it out. So I'm lining this up where my sentiment is left justified in the banner. That way I can run this through and then I can shorten up the banner to match my sentiment length. So I'll just pop this right back on there and cut off the other end so that my banner is slightly shorter and it fits my sentiment perfect and it also fits on my card perfectly. I'm adding some foam squares to the back of this so that it can be popped up just like my images. And I'll just line this up below this beautiful heart wreath. And then finally, this is where that cute little snail comes in. I just thought he would be really fun to look like he's sitting on top of this banner since the banner is made out of wood. I just think that's really fun. It's kind of like a little woodsy sign. Now for my glitter embellishments, I have my stickles, which I will add to the snail, the mushrooms, the flower, and the butterflies. I'll also add some to the bow. And then I'm going to go around and just add some dots to a few of the dots that were created through the stencil. So some of those little pink dots will have glitter, but I'm not doing it to everyone, just kind of being a little random, just to have some more sparkle in the background. 
And then here is my completed card. I love how this turned out. There's something really cool about stenciling and inking on some speckled eggshell cardstock, and this card turned out so cute. So I'm starting out with a piece of speckled eggshell cardstock. This is larger than the panel that I want to create, and I will trim that out later after I have all of my stenciling done. I'm starting with some celery stick ink for the little hill. That will be the base and the bottom for me to build my little garden on. Now, if you are afraid that you will go into the other openings, you can protect them with some post-it notes or some tape. I was just being very careful to not go into the other openings or off the edge of the stencil. I'm also using some freshly cut grass with a small blending brush to add some darkness to the top of my hill. So when I pull this away, you can kind of see the color variation that I created with those two inks. Now I can shift my stencil down and I'm starting with those three stems that are in the center. They line up right on the top of the hill that I already created. And I'm using jalapeno ink for these. So this is an even darker green than the grass that I use for the hill. And I'm just using a small blending brush again to make sure that I stay within the openings that I want to ink and I don't accidentally get into any of the other openings. Now this is perfect for a portrait style card, but I'm making a landscape card, so I want to have a bit wider garden. So I'm going to use the stems on the left and the right, and I'm using freshly cut grass for these so they are a slightly lighter color than the three in the center. And I'm overlapping the stems so I get some dimension and depth in my stenciling. So I'll pull this up and shift it over and do the same thing for the stem on the left side of the stencil. And now you can see the garden start to take shape. Now I did feel like I wanted a little more difference between the center stems and the two on the sides. So I've lined this back up and I'm pulling out some clover ink and I'll just add a little bit of that darker green to the tops of the stems. And when I pull this away, you can see that that really helped kind of make them look different. Now I can shift this down and line up with the hearts. There are little etching lines that help you line this up. And for all five of my hearts, I'm going to use five different colors. So I've set my colors in order so I don't get confused and mess up. I'm starting with this one and it is going to be with some fake tan ink. I'm using only the one color, but I'm trying to concentrate my ink a bit more at the top so I get a little bit of that look of shading. The next one will be some sunflower ink. And then this third one will be forget me not. So now that I have the three in the centered stenciled, I can peel this up and shift this around and work on the flower on the left side. For this one, I'm using some guava ink. And then I'll just pull this up and move to that other flower on the right. I actually had a little bit of white there at the base where it meets the stem. So I just lined that back up and added some more blue ink. That's what I was doing there. Really easy to fix that. And then I'm using some grape jelly purple for that last little flower on the right. And here is that super cute little rainbow heart garden. I did decide I wanted a little more of that darker freshly cut grass on the top of the hill. So it's really easy to reline your stencil if you want to add a bit more ink. So this is a very cute little garden just as it is, but it would be even cuter with some little smiley faces. So one of the perfect stamp sets for little smiles is the Sweet Smile stamp set. This has tons of little faces that we can add to these cute little heart flowers. So I'm just flipping this over constantly just to get a better look at the faces. And I'm picking out five different ones to stamp onto my flowers so that they are all different. This one has so many choices that none of your flowers need to be the same. 
Now that my panel is all finished, I can take the largest of these small stitch rectangles and center my whole stenciled garden up in that rectangle and trim it out. I think it is a lot easier to stencil first and then trim later. I'm going in with some apricot ink just to define the edges and kind of make it have a little more color on this speckled eggshell cardstock. And it really makes the stitching detail stand out a bit more when you do this. Now I'm ready for my sentiment and I'm pulling out the All My Heart stamp set. There is a sentiment that says you make my heart smile and the word heart is scripty and I think that this is really fun with the mix of fonts. There's also a die that you could cut that word heart out as well. I am lining this up along the bottom of my hill that I stenciled and I will just stamp this directly onto this panel. You could also use a sentiment banner and as I said before, that word heart has a matching die which I think is really fun. So I'm just stamping this in black ink using my Misty so everything is nice and lined up. Now I have already colored and cut out my little critters that will be on this. I'm not going to adhere them down just yet, but they are the tiny little porcupines from both the Porcupine For You stamp set as well as the add-on. But I am cutting a piece of some favorite flannel hot toddy paper. This is from a 12 by 12 sheet. This is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half so that it can go on my card base and be the background that frames up my little stenciled panel. So I'll just add this to my card base with some adhesive. And then I'll be ready to add my stenciled panel using some foam tape. This will pop that panel up off of that pattern paper and give it some really nice dimension. Now I'm ready for my cute little critters. And what I loved about this is that they look like they're in a giant garden because they're so little and these flowers are so tall. I did stamp and color this little snail but I did not end up using him because I couldn't figure out how I wanted to lay these out. I just felt like it was a little too crowded with him in there. So I stuck with just the little porcupines so that they're centered right here over that sentiment. I will add those with some foam squares so they are popped up off that background and have some dimension and I just think that they are so adorable in this giant garden. Now I did not want my cute little snail to go to waste so I was trying to figure out where would be a good place for him and what I decided actually was he is going to be a cute little surprise on the inside of the card. So I will just add a little bit of glue and pop him right inside there so he's kind of the surprise snail inside when you open it up to read your sentiment. Now for some glitter. Instead of using stickles this time, I wanted to add some gold glitter hearts sprinkled around. So I just cut some gold glitter cardstock with the hearts from the Hearts and Stars skinny tag and I'm just sprinkling those around, picking them up and adding them with some liquid glue. And then here is my finished card. I love that heart garden. I just think it's so cute with those little porcupines. I love this garden and the smiling flowers so much, Shari. They are so sweet. And this heart wreath card is one of my favorites that you've ever made. I am so in love with it. I can't wait to make one just like it. But for now, we're going to start using our hot foil. And remember that hot foil that we die cut earlier? We're going to add that to a card. So here we have some spiffier speckles paper. And we're going to die cut this really pretty peachy color with the largest of the outside in stitched rectangles. Then we're going to take this lots of heart stencil. And we're going to do some stenciling over top of the pattern paper. And I love stenciling over top of pattern paper because it gives such a beautiful dynamic kind of depth to it. And the fact that this paper has gold foil on it makes it feel even more special. So we're going to come in with some peachy keen ink to go along with this kind of peach colored paper and that's going to give us kind of a tone on tone feel and so we're going to fill in all of these hearts and then we can lift up the stencil and grab the second one of the set and fill in the rest of the hearts. There's two of these so that you could add two different colors but in this case we're just going to stick with that peachy keen ink again. That way it's going to be a little bit more of a subtle background to add our really pretty hot foil to. And I never quite get over how fun it is to do the reveal of the stencil and we lift it up and we have those really cute hearts. 
Now for the rest of this card, we're going to keep it really clean and simple. So we're going to take out some gold metallic cardstock, and we're just going to trim that down to be about an inch wide, and we're going to layer that on to this pretty stencil background, and that's going to look really pretty with the gold foil that the paper already has. Then we're going to take the heart that we foiled at the beginning of the video and then die cut with the Stitch Happy Heart. And we're just going to add some foam squares to the back of that to give it a nice pop. And then we're going to layer that right over that gold foil piece. And I just think this is just so pretty. It's just like a classic Valentine. Then we can take this whole piece and add some more foam dots. I always like to add lots of foam dots when a card is simple because it gives it a nice pop. And we're going to layer this onto a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter to give it a nice white border that's also going to match really nicely with the white cardstock that we foiled the Happy Valentine's Day onto. And now you can see how sparkly and gorgeous this is. I mean, look at this. Oh, it's so much fun and so quick and easy to do too. So we just had to do some more hot foiling and now we are going to hot foil this foiled sentiment onto some vellum. So we're going to add it to our glimmer machine and we're going to press the timer button and we're going to let that flash for about a minute or so until the light is solid and then we're going to layer our awesome foil on top and then we're going to layer our vellum. Then on top of the vellum, I recommend putting a cardstock shim. We put a 100 pound cardstock shim right on top and then we're going to put the two plates over top of that. The vellum's pretty thin, so adding that cardstock shim will just help it as you run it through your die cut machine have enough pressure to foil in to your vellum. So now we can lift this up and look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so beautiful to have the foil on that translucent vellum. It just like reminds me of a fancy wedding invitation. So we're going to take out that stitched happy heart die again and we're going to die cut that vellum with our foiled sentiment on it. And then we're going to put that beautiful vellum heart aside to do some stenciling. So we're going to take out the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles and we're going to die cut some white cardstock. And we're going to be using the heart wreath stencils for this. And what's so cool about the heart wreath stencil is that it was sized perfectly to work with this foiled sentiment. So you'll see how that's going to work in just a second. But we're going to center this heart wreath right into our card here. And we're going to hold it in place with the magnets. And we're going to use some cilantro ink and we're going to ink up all of the leafy parts of this hearth wreath, heart wreath. That is very hard to say. <laughs> And then once we've built up all the color, we can go ahead and lift up the stencil and look how beautiful that's looking. Now we're going to bring in part two and it has some beautiful etching lines that make it really easy to line up with the greenery that you've already stenciled onto your card. And now we're going to take some fresh lavender ink out and we're going to create some purple hearts, which I think are going to look so beautiful on this. Um, another way that I really love to use this is to do the hearts in green. I think something about the tone on tone makes it feel just like a wreath and not as much like a Valentine's wreath. It makes it so that stencil would be perfect all year round. And look how beautiful that is with the purple. Oh my goodness, it's just lovely. Now we're going to bring back our foiled sentiment and you see that we're going to be really careful about adding our liquid glue because you can see adhesive through vellum so we're just hiding little drops of glue behind the foiled letters where you won't be able to see any of that glue. And then we're going to layer this right on the inside and you can see how beautifully that layers into the heart wreath with the vellum. I just think this is such a gorgeous look with the foil in the middle. It's just stunning. So now that we have this panel all done, we're going to flip it over and we're going to add foam squares just like we did on our other foiled card because this is also a more clean and simple card. And so by adding that pop, it's just going to make it feel really special. And here we have some textured cardstock in this beautiful purple color that's going to look really great with those purple hearts. And then we can take a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter and we can go ahead and add our adhesive to that and then layer this whole panel on top. And now this card is all done. I love the vellum and the foil and the stenciled wreath. It is just so stunning and so beautiful. I just love all that beautiful shine on the card. And next up, Shari is going to make the cutest Stitch Taffy Heart card. So take it away, Shari. I'm creating a card with these stitched happy heart dies, which is this outside in stitched heart, and it has those fun smiley face details. I'll cut my heart from some pink plaid fruit salad paper, and then I'm also cutting a panel from some favorite flannel plaid paper for my background. I cut that with the largest outside in stitch rectangle. I've cut the cute little cheeks from some ballet slipper cardstock, which is what you see in my little tray there. And then I'm just lining up the face so I can cut that out of the heart. Then I can add my little cheeks right below the eyes and on each side of the mouth. 
And then I decided I wanted to kind of ink up the edges of this and darken it a little bit so it stands out on that plaid that's the background. So I'm using some abandoned coral distress ink which matches the pink of this plaid pretty well and just adding some darkness to the edges. This will help it stand out against that pattern paper background a bit more. I'm adding this plaid from the favorite flannel collection to a panel that is four and a quarter by five and a half that is cut from some ballet slipper card stock. So I get that nice pink frame around all four sides. Now there are some little details in this die set like this little strip here. This is a ribbon like going around a box of chocolates. I've cut this from some peacock cardstock and I'm just adding that to the top left side here. I've also cut the little bow in the die set from that same peacock cardstock and when you layer it over top of this ribbon you get the look as if that box of chocolates is tied up with a bow. There is also a die that cuts these little arms with hands on the end and I am cutting those from some narwhal cardstock. Those will go on each side to make it look like this cute happy heart is giving you a hug. I'm also cutting that heart from some storm cloud cardstock and I will layer it behind so that it fills in the eyes and the mouth and makes them dark gray. This will also give my pattern paper a little more stability because I plan on popping this up with some foam squares. First I want to stamp my sentiment onto my background before I start adding all of my images and embellishments and I am using a sentiment from the Magic Heart Messages set that says would you be mine. I really love the font on this particular sentiment. I've just picked that up with the door of my Misty and I am inking it up with black ink and I'll stamp that right onto that pattern paper. Now I did put this on a cardstock panel instead of on a card base so I need to add this whole thing to my card base before I start adding all of my elements to the front. So I've just put my adhesive on the back and adding that to a card base and now I have foam adhesive all over the back of the heart and I will just center this up above my sentiment. Then I can add my little arms which I will glue directly to the background piece just tucking the ends of the arms underneath the heart. And I like how the arms kind of go off the side of the card too. I think that's really fun. I do want to make sure they're nice and even on each side. And I just think that that is so adorable like it wants to give you a big hug. Now I have some rose gold metallic cardstock and there is a die in this set that cuts out little hearts that look like sequins. I'm also adding some hearts in from the hearts and stars skinny tag die set so I have a couple different sizes of hearts to just sprinkle around my image. I love the shimmer of this metallic cardstock and it adds some nice interest to the card. There's also these tiny little sentiments in the Magic Heart Messages stamp set that I thought would be fun to kind of sprinkle around just like embellishments on the back panel of the card as well. So there's one that says XOXO, one that says moi, and there is also hugs and kisses. So I've just sprinkled these around to figure out kind of where I wanted them to be in addition to the little sequins and hearts that I sprinkled around. And I'll just stamp each of them in some peacock ink so that they're kind of tone on tone on that background. It's just kind of a fun little detail that when you really start looking and you seeing those little sentiments, they just kind of make you smile. And then I'm adding some glitter to the bow just to make it stand out a little bit from the ribbon that's behind it. And here is my finished stitched happy heart card and it is such a happy little heart. I think it is so cute and this would be really fun to make some quick valentines. Oh my goodness Shari, this is so cute. I love that he looks like he's ready to give me a hug. Absolutely adorable. And next up we have some beautiful cards by the design team. And here Callie foiled directly on to her stenciled heart wreath and I think that's such a beautiful idea and another way to do it without the vellum like we did earlier. Maureen added the cutest little porcupines in to her heart garden and I think this card is just so sweet and I love the square size. 
Here this card by Mindy is so beautiful, the quilted backdrop is just perfect for a gorgeous foiled sentiment. Next up, Grace got so clever. I just love that she did this. She used our waving pull tab die and turned it into this really cute interactive heart who moves his arms. So she added the arms from the Stitch Happy Heart die set to the waving pull tab, and now this cute little heart can wave his arms back and forth, and I love that he's wearing a tuxedo too. This card by Yanea is so pretty. I love the layered hearts and all of the beautiful layered pattern papers behind. It's just gorgeous. And then here, I love that Elena added a cute little lamb into this heart surrounded by the heart wreath. It's just adorable. This card by Megan is so much fun, and she shows us that the Stitch Happy Heart is just a great size heart for layering your sentiments onto. And then here is the card by Audrey that inspired us to make ours today. I love the beautiful heart garden and all the shading she added to it. This card by Elise is just gorgeous. I love the extra detail she added onto the heart wreath and how she made the flowers all different colors. And here Letitia got her scissors out and she trimmed out the heart garden in such a beautiful card with beautiful clouds. And then Audrey shows us that you can also layer the magic heart messages into the wreaths too. So there's so many ways to use all of these products together and we cannot wait to see what you guys are going to create with them. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.